Welcome back. I am a programmer and you are watching Learn to Code. In this lecture, we are going to learn about join method. We have already seen the typical implementation of wait and notify mechanism in lecture 3 of this series, how to return value from threads. Now, in this lecture, we are only going to discuss about the join method and how it mimics the mechanism of wait and notify methods. To understand more about it, let's check out the internal implementation of this join method. Let's go to the thread class inside java.lang package. As we can see, the join is a synchronized method, so only one thread can access it at a time. Inside join, is alive method is used to check the status of the current thread and wait is used to put the thread into a waiting state. So let's see the one node provided by the developer. This implementation uses a loop of this dot wait calls condition on is alive. As a thread terminates that this dot notify all method is invoked. It is recommended that the application should not use wait, notify or notify all on the thread where we are calling the join method. When we call join method, it is stop the execution of currently running thread until the thread it joins complete its task. Let's write some code and use the join method to get full understanding of it. So please be sure you subscribe to my channel as I upload new tutorials every week. I'm going to use reading task array class. Let me stretch it a little bit. So this is our class reading task array. We have created this class in the first lecture. Let me go through this file once again. So this class implements a runnable interface and overrides run method. Inside run method, we are reading the course topics.txt file by using the stream API. And for printing on console print file method, simply use system.println to print it. Just ignore this if condition for now. Let's go back to the main driver class and create three instances of uh, reading task array. And uh, also we will create uh, three thread instances for these tasks. Let's write it reading task array task1 equals new reading task array. Then thread thread1 equals new thread. Let me pass this task1 here and then name it read1. I'm gonna invoke start method on this thread thread one dot start. Let me copy paste this and change it to two. Task two. Also change the thread name to read two. Thread two. Let me copy paste this also and change it to three. Task three. And the name of the thread to read three. And uh, Thread 3. Let me change the read 3 name also. Why did I did this? Because I do not want my thread to put into sleep as of now. If your thread name is read 3, it is going to put your thread into sleep for 1000 millisecond before printing each and every line. Alright. Let me write a sys out at the end. System out print ln. All thread execution completed. Also, one sys out at the beginning of the main method. System out threads are starting by main thread. All right. In output, line five should be printed first. Then all threads at the end. Line number eighteen should be printed. Let's run it and see the output. Oh, what happened? We were expecting this line to be printed at the end. Then how did this print it before? Let's go back to the code. This line is printed on the console and then the last line is printed and then afterwards these tasks executed and then printed their lines from the text file. It's still a question stands how this happened. Let's see this. This is a main driver class. At the very start, this first line is printed. Then 
start method of thread 1, thread 2 and thread 3 were invoked. Immediately the last line printed and the main thread ended there. Just after the main thread ended, read 1, read 2 and read 3 S. These threads start executing their task and start printing the file content on the console. So these tasks were in progress but the main thread is ended first. So that's why that line is printed before. Now I want thread 3 to sleep for 1000 millisecond before printing each line. I'm gonna change this thread name to read 3. Let's call the join method on thread 1 and 2 thread one dot join oh it is showing an error let's see okay it is expecting an interrupted exception here so let's throw it all right let's call the join method on thread 2 as well we have called join on thread 1 and 2 so that these two threads can finish their task even before triggering thread 3 and then the main thread will invoke the thread 3 and will end it there. Let's run and see the output. As we see read 1 and read 2 has completed their task then main thread has printed this line and then is thread 3 start executing its task. So let's go and call the join method on thread 3 as well. Thread 3 dot join so that all threads should be completed before main thread end. Now let's run it again. Beautiful. Read 1, read 2 and read 3 task has been completed. Then the main thread has printed this line at the end. This was expected result. We have seen all the scenarios how we can put the calling thread into a wait state so that we can execute some task and then come back to the thread. This is complete. In the next lecture we will talk about how to schedule a task to perform operation automatically or after a particular interval of time. So see you there.